Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation on the following publication, Not All Causal Inference is the Same, authored by myself, Matej Zetjevic, Devendra Singh Dami, and Christian Kersting from TU Darmstadt, uh, the Computer Science Department, and also Center for Cognitive Science, Hessian AI, and also the German Research Center for AI, DFKI. The talk today is grounded in the following, the publication we had at TMLR this year, later this year. Um, let's jump right into it. So causal inference is concerned with modeling assumptions outside the data. It's a language for formalizing many ideas and they lead to interesting uh, subtopics such as identification and estimation of, of causal effects, graph learning, learning of causal relations in the first place, and much more. Causal inference in, for, or with AI, and by that implied machine learning, is about a different thing. It's about getting these machines finally to be smart. So things like attributions, explanations, having robust and invariant predictors, reasoning chains, etc. Causal inference, though, is concerned with getting answers, getting the answers we want and getting them efficiently. Let's make an example with the Rubik's cube. Here you see the famous three by three uh, by three cube. And there is a number of potential positions that I don't even know how to pronounce. It's, it's a huge number. But interestingly, from any position, from any scramble of the cube, there's at most 20 moves necessary to solve said cube. This is also referred to as God's number. Oftentimes because you would have to be God to... <laughs> remember all these uh, solutions for this cube. It is known that the Rubik's cube is NP hard actually. So when we consider a decision problem, can a particular cube scramble be solved in exactly N moves specified? Complexity classes and, and in general, the, the study of uh, algorithmic complexity as asymptotic complexity is a longstanding tradition in computer science. And there's many different classes, the, the famous class P, NP, with the famous whether NP equals P problem, but much more beyond. Right? Also on, on the quantum level, for example, you see here on the left-hand side, BQP um, as a quantum version of BPP, but you also see uh, problems more difficult than NP being sharp P, where you even have to count uh, the number of solutions. We say that a problem is according to some complexity, hard, if that problem would solve all the other problems in that class. And if that problem is also part of the class, then we usually call it complete. This talk is brief and not too formal, since then doing that would be very hard. Uh, all lighthearted jokes are, uh, aside, for all details, please consider the full paper. We are going to share the link at the end of this talk. So, Consider the situation that you're facing a problem and you're not able to solve it. How do you justify to your boss? This is gonna explain a bit of the intuition for readers unfamiliar with complexity classes. So the bad way of doing it essentially would be to just say, well, I cannot solve this. And the boss might conclude, well, you're too dumb. The right way of doing this is by pointing to all the other people who are also not able to do it. And so in this sense, being NP hard is a good thing because it's not just you that cannot solve it, it's a general hard problem. So since we are concerned with inference, uh, we consider the problem of tractability, of, of having tractable inference, so, so efficient inference. Uh, what do we mean exactly by this? So here's the definition. It's simply a class of queries Q. We say it's tractable on a family of probabilistic models, M, if and only if for any query and any model exactly. So we are not concerned with approximate, but exact computation. QM runs in polynomial time, polynomial in the size of the model. Examples are, you know, cubic runtime, a high degree polynomial, or just linear inference. There's a famous known results for probabilistic graphical models, which obviously includes the Bayesian network from the 90s, which shows that exact marginal inference is actually sharp P hard. So if you remember uh, the, the, the diagram from earlier, it's a more difficult problem than even uh, the, all the NP problems we, are know, we, we know of. And for example, the Rubik's cube we had at the very beginning. Um, approximate inference on the other hand reduces the problem at least to NP hardness. So 
We want to answer the following question in today's talk. What is the landscape of tractabil tractability of inference and causal models? And in the cases where that's bad, what kind of design choices could we make? What kind of trade-offs are available for us to improve the situation? So a short overview. So we are going to ask the question, are there even different types of causal models? Then we are going to look at inference in different types of uh, degrees of causality, essentially. So first of all, non-causal models, which we're going to define, of course, then partially and also structural causal models, as we know them from Peirce causality. Then we're going to summarize the key differences, and there will be a bonus chapter, which already hints and spoilers um, all of the previous. Essentially, we're going to speed up uh, the mechanism component of inference. The too long did not read. So AI requires that inference in causal inference is effectively computable. And classical causal models might not do the trick, but we can do something about it. So section one, are there even different types of causal models? So there are neural nets. We know them from deep learning, tremendous success, especially with recent advances in, for example, uh, um, chatbots such as ChatGPT or, or even uh, image diffusion models such as DALI. The lesser known, uh, some product networks, also a type of, of neural model, which uh, focuses on, on effective inference, on tractable inference. So they are going to play a big, big role here. Um, we are going to, we, we point to the paper with uh, introductory material and reviews for these subclass of models for anyone not familiar, but essentially there's, uh, these are DAGs consisting of uh, some product and leaf nodes and, and they do probabilistic inference, they're generative models, and, and they can do so tractably. And there's many more non-causal models, as we call them. For example, something like linear group regression, uh, some special architectures, obviously, like convolutional networks. When we say non-causal, uh, naturally, it goes without saying that you can use them for causal inference, like linear models are used in causality all the time and go for computer pot potential outcomes and, and, and much more. Um, however, they have no inherent notion of covering what we know as the Perl causal hierarchy uh, in the generative sense. And so that's why we label them non-causal. Then, of course, there's the structural causal model, classically, and so it's the centerpiece of Perl's formalism, consisting of endogenous and exogenous variables related by mechanistic structural equations and some exogeneity distribution over, over these exogenous variables um, that captures uncertainty. Here, taken from uh, Bonges et al., um, uh, a little hierarchy on, 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 on the structural causal models. And we want to point out to one specific relation, which is the Bayesian network, the causal Bayesian network. Uh, they are incapable of handling counterfactuals. Simply, it's, it's not possible to define these quantities as in the st structural causal model, uh, let alone talk about concepts such as hidden confounders. And in that, in that sense, we can actually consider them maybe to not be even proper causal models, right? So, so justifying the, the, the history also of these models. So we have seen Bayesian networks now, structural causal models, uh, neural nets, SPNs, and, and, and similar, um, giving a, an overview of, of what um, different generative models, which can consider degrees of causality are. Other partially causal models, which we are going to define in this work as well as, as a first, uh, are models like the interventional subproduct network, which make use of uh, graph information to con condition um, the, the parameters of the subsequent subproduct network, which then can predict interventional distributions, which is not possible with just vanilla SPNs. So let's jump right into the section two in the first part, inference in non-causal or you might even refer to them simply as correlation-based models. So classically, what we do here is we have a query, a causal query. We could use Perl's do calculus, which is a complete um, uh, set of set of axioms essentially for deriving any kind of estimate for anything that is estimable, uh, identifiable, and then you use data and a model to actually estimate this estimate. So, for example, you have to query uh, what's the probability of of y given an intervention x. Um, and then the estimate, given some graph structure, here it would be some, some backdoor graph, would be that you have to condition on, on Z. And then we would use a model to actually estimate this quantity. We would train to get both these conditional, uh, conditional and, and, and marginal probabilities. Uh, we could, for example, just train for the joint distribution and then extract those quantities separately. And example models, obviously, would be some of the models we have seen before. For example, neural nets, some product networks, Bayesian networks. 
So uh, our first corollary here to state is that if Q is an identifiable causal query, then the size of the Q is the number of terms in that estimate, and R is the number of edges in the dark of the SPN, as we said, an SPN is a DAG. Um, and then if uh, the, the size of the query is essentially smaller, then that query is actually tractable. And for SPN, Q would actually even be linear time tractable, so pretty much optimal. Now, onto the second part of section two, which is inference in, in parameterized causal models, classically the structural causal model, and also a thing that we're going to call partially causal model. So let's define this first. So might be looking complicated now, but uh, don't worry, we are going to uh, dissect this. So, so what you see on the right-hand side is essentially a depiction of, of um, how we are going to quantify to which extent they are partially causal, but they are also going to cover non-causal and, and, and fully causal models fully causal being structural causal models. So the definition is simply that we have a model, which is a generative model, so it generates distributions, and we are going to compare them to a parallel causal hierarchy, which automatically means that there is some reference structural causal model for any of these partial causal models. Uh, by this LI operator on a model, we simply refer to the set of distributions generated for the specific level, and the levels are uh, associational, being I equal 1, interventional I equal 2, and counterfactual I equal 3. And the three conditions we highlight here are simply that we can actually generate the associational distribution. Um, that's the, importantly, that the intervention and counterfactuals are simply a subset of uh, the, the, the reference SEMs, intervention and counterfactual distributions, which are, well, infinite. Um, but that at most, one of these causal levels is only infinite. So, because otherwise that will result in, in, in a full coverage and then it would just be at least on the cause reasoning behavior equal to the reference SEM, which would mean that it's fully causal. And so when we look at the figure on the right-hand side, we simply have the simplex where essentially anything within, uh, which, which is not touching the corners is, is a subset. Touching the corners means equality. And uh, now we are gonna classify these models that we have seen before in section one, according to this definition. So let's kick off first with the associational models, right? For example, just a linear regression model. Well, it can only uh, really cover the, the uh, L1 distribution. So it's it's not even a plane, it's just a single line. Now the SCM covers the, the whole simplex because it's the fully causal model. It's gonna be uh, infinite and matching to some kind of SCM on all three levels. Now the causal Bayesian network, as we've seen interestingly, can now be uh, also qualified here. So, so we are touching two of the corners, but most importantly, we cannot even define the third corner. And now what we call partially causal models are the ones which are somehow in between those, right? So uh, for example, the, the classical PCM as we would define it would just me be measuring L1 and uh, which is just a single distribution and then have some kind of subset of L2, L3, but it could also be, you know, a PCM, SCM hybrid as you call it here, uh, if it was the CBN, but could also handle counterfactuals. Um, but not generate uh, arbitrary many. So jumping now again to to the topic of this in this, this section, which is you know the coverage of inference and, and the tractability. So here we have our proposition that uh, if we have a set of uh, queries QI, then uh, R is before for some ISPN now, so for some interventional uh, SPN, then any QK is actually linear, linear time tractable here. So. Um, most importantly here to, to answer is that actually the, there's no inherent identification and, and data assumptions are actually necessary for this model. Uh, at first, this, this seemed very powerful, but this is really a sobering uh, assumption that has to be placed on the ISPN. However, there can be arbitrary many distributions on uh, with ex exact and in, in efficient inference, essentially, and, and that's reassuring. So, so there's a trade-off, essentially, um, that if the data is available, then this is a great model for working with... Uh, with, with such mixed uh, interventional data. Now onto a different type of model, which is uh, a combination of neural networks with a causal graph as an inductive bias, also known as the neural causal model, the NCM for short, which is just a parameterized SCM with neural network mechanisms. And the key theorem we have here is really a derivation of, of these previous results as well that we have had from uh, Bayesian networks. And it goes now also to parameters SEM. That causal marginal inference, exact inference, in any parameterized SEM is actually NP hat. And so 
the proof is not being shown, but just the intuition behind it. So we are going to do a reduction to three set. Three set is uh, the, the question of these um, uh, clauses with, with uh, three uh, literals uh, and whether it's all in all satisfiable. So, so can we find a configuration such, such that it evaluates the truth? And um, solving causal inference essentially then amounts to solving three set, right? And since three set uh, then is, well, it's known to be NP hard, we can actually conclude that causal inference is NP hard because uh, you would have to solve three set within your causal inference. So it's essentially a reduction, a transformation technique uh, commonly done in uh, uh, asymptotic uh, complexity uh, analysis. And well, we already hinted that this would be a historical issue inherited from BNs. And just to highlight this, so if we have on the left-hand side a Bayesian network and on the right-hand side an SPN, uh, these two are not uh, corresponding, you know, this is just a conceptual visualization, but it makes it very clear that on the right-hand side we have uh, less of an abstraction. So uh, essentially we can categorize this as following, that the left-hand side is actually a semantic graph, whereas the right-hand side is a computational graph. So it seems that transitioning from the Bayesian network back then to the SPN to, to solve the, the problem of inference, uh, came at the cost of, of losing uh, uh, semantic value. So there's an open question. Can we have the best of both worlds? So in this third section, we just want to summarize the key difference that we have identified. So a little taxonomy. Uh, first, there's going to be the model family we're looking at, for example, neural nets. Then the causal hierarchy containing the three levels, as we discussed. Then identification, which is simply the question, can we, for example, you know, do this interlayer inference that uh, we get uh, answers from L2 with just using L1 data and assumptions. Um, mechanism inference, so complexity of actually computing any kind of mechanism. And then marginal inference, which is just uh, the marginal distributions. So looking first at non-causal models, we can see, for example, uh, least squares, CNNs, generative adversarial networks, um, they they just cover the, the, the first rung. They have no means of identification. There's uh, no no notion of mechanism inference, so so you don't even see a, neither a cross nor a check there. And the marginal inference is polynomial. Looking at the best model for this, which is not the most expressive model, uh, lacking on that department, but at least is very efficient, is the SPN. Then for partially causal models, we are just listing a few that we have here, but for example, the causal VAE, uh, the interventional variation graph autoencoder, the causal GAN, um, the causal transformer, they can cover interventional distributions, have no notion of identification, uh, thus no mechanism inference, uh, but uh, marginal inference is polynomial. Now the ISPN actually resolves this at least on that level because it uh, compares to the other models, but is at least linear in, in, in marginal inference. Now looking at partially causal models with counterfactuals, we can go up to L3. Uh, however, we have the same picture with just polynomial inference time. Now looking at proper SCMs, we see, for example, the NCM, the deep NCM, or some uh, counterfactual notions. And here we can actually do identification. So for the first time also, we, we can talk about mechanism inference. Um, we see that it's polynomial and an even worse marginal inference ends up being intractable. So the question is, is there at least maybe an SCM which is linear in mechanism time inference? And now we jump to the conclusion. Uh, you can already expect what's coming here. Well, we're going to speed this up because the answer will be yes. So remembering the NCM, we can simply replace the neural nets with some product networks, and we will have so-called linear time mechanism NCM. Here, just some uh, brief empirics. So, so what you see here is uh, on the x-axis, the number of units and st or structural equations, essentially, uh, as depicted also on the right-hand side. Um, essentially, if we you know take a causal chain and, and just extend it, um, and then on the y-axis, uh, we have the runtime in seconds. And this is log plot. So we see that both NCM and LTNCM are intractable simply because uh, with the number of, of, of units, um, we, we have this, this exponential blow up. However, if we only consider mechanism inference, which was the thing we, we tried improving here, so we are just increasing the size of any of these edges uh, from, from the previous uh, illustration, then we see actually that uh, LTNCM is linear time tractable, which is not the case for regular NCM because uh, of the neural nets employed. So the answer is yes, we can at least get linear uh, mechanism inference, although marginal inference uh, following our theorem remains intractable. So some final remarks. 
it is clear that we want with uh, for AI causal reasoning uh, capabilities because you know interacting with change is fundamental in nature. But it's also clear that we don't want to wait aeons and and uh, and, and waste endless resources to get an answers from AI, uh, considering a very real world problem, for example, like uh, climate change, um, which which uh, are difficult to handle with respect to all the growing demand by models, considering especially what we mentioned earlier. Uh, models like GPT, models like DALI, and so on and so forth. So essentially, what we ask is how much causal with versus how efficient the acquisition of, of causal, causal knowledge. And so maybe these partially causal models that we have covered could be an open end to this. So in summary, here's the full paper link, which contains all the details, also the link to the, the code, which reproduces the empirical part, also our funding disclosure. We have seen in this work uh, that not call all causal inference is the same, um, but that we can classify uh, and categorize those and, and analyze separately and that there's things that we can do. Um, and yeah, we are thankful for your time and we will look forward to talking to you. You can reach us via mail, uh, it's showing here on the slide. And also if you want to stay in touch with the community, there's the weekly uh, causality discussion group um, available. Thank you so much.